it must be some of the most devastating news I think parents can receive. Their baby has a heart defect. But with today's sophisticated imaging equipment, doctors often find out about these problems months before the babies are even born. And that allows treatment to begin as soon as possible after birth. But now medicine is beginning to take that next step to see if we can fix babies' hearts before they're born. Scary in here. <laughs> Last fall, Jay and Sally Wiley were happily awaiting the arrival of their second child. Sally is an obstetrician herself. So on a quiet day in her office, she decided to have a sonogram. They told us there was something seriously wrong. At 22 weeks of pregnancy, Sally's baby was developing a devastating heart defect called hypoplastic left heart syndrome. A valve releasing blood from the heart was narrow, too narrow. As a result, the left side of the heart was steadily shrinking and shutting down. The baby was losing half his heart. What were the options? What could you have done at that point? Well, we had some hard decisions to make, whether or not we wanted to terminate the pregnancy, um, which we could have done, uh, or, just, or just ride it out and see what, see what developed. Their ride took them to the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. The valve was blocked. And Dr. Louise Wilkins Hogg. This is the actual device that you use? Right, so this, this is the styletted needle that we use. The plan seemed impossible. Operate on the baby before he was born. This was the scene in October when Sally and her baby underwent a fetal heart operation. Doctors placed a needle through Sally's abdomen, into the uterus, through the baby's skin, and directly into the heart of the baby. An amazing feat, since at that point the heart of a fetus is about the size of a grape. These images of the baby's heart were taken during the actual procedure. And you can see that the tip of the needle is inside this black chamber. That's the left ventricle. That's amazing. Once the needle reached the block valve, a tiny balloon was inflated, clearing the way for blood flow in the ventricle. And doctors could see that blood flow right away. This is the goal. That's you want to see goal. that red and blue going across the valve. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Earlier this month, Anders Wiley entered the world, and both the ventricles in his heart are pumping away. Cute little boy. Thank, Thank you. you. Anders is in a neonatal intensive care unit, so doctors can monitor how his heart is working. Can you see anything about where they performed the operation? I think they probably went around through the rib here. You know, you can't really see the scar anymore, mm -hmm. um, but they went through his ribs right into the heart. A little peanut. Anders does face a long road ahead. There is no guarantee that the valve in the left ventricle won't close again. But for now, he has a fighting chance at a normal life. He really looks great to me. It's, it's amazing. I, you know, I didn't know what to expect, quite yeah. honestly. He just looks, to me, looks mm -hmm. really good. Yeah, he's a little cutie. And how Anders is going to do in the long run is a tougher question. There have only been about 100 of these fetal heart operations ever performed. And get this, the oldest survivor, just four years old, so it's brand new. And, and Sanjay, you're a neurosurgeon, but to operate on that teeny tiny heart must require nerves of steel. Uh, you know, I, I was watching this actually going on. The, the ultrasound images are kind of fuzzy as it is. Then you're guiding this catheter through something so tiny. It was, it was amazing. Typically, we magnify things several times to be able to see. This heart is, is this big, literally, and you're, and you're performing surgery on it. Meanwhile, are they thinking about doing in utero surgery for other things? I know they do it for spina bifida, for example, but anything else on the horizon? Yeah, I found something really interesting. They're looking at cleft lips and cleft palates, a seemingly very disfiguring thing, uh, even if it's repaired after birth. You saw there was no scar with Anders. If they could do that same sort of operation in utero, you might be able to fix these cleft palates and cleft lips without any evidence that it was even there. But there is some risk, so I guess it is some It's a cosmetic procedure. Do you want to do, uh, subject the baby to that kind of risk for a cosmetic procedure? People are, are still sorting that out.